So let's actually calculate this and put in the kinetic energy term. So T equals, this is the kinetic energy that I'm using T for, T equals 1 half m times the velocity squared. And another way to write that is, is 1 half m times dx dt squared. Right, velocity is just the time derivative of the position squared. So now instead of putting in x of t, right, this would be x of t, we're going to put in this x bar of t plus this eta function, which is the difference in their positions. So t, after we make our substitution, is going to be m over 2. And I'll just show all the steps here. d dt of x bar of t plus this difference function eta. And all of this squared. And we can distribute this derivative, right? It's a linear operator, so it can it can we can take these derivatives separately. A derivative of the sum is the same as the sum of the derivatives. So m over two times I'll I'll write it in pink this time x of t. So the time derivative of the true path x plus the time derivative of the difference function all of that squared I should go back to orange squared and now if we evaluate this square here we'll get at t equals m over 2, and I'll make a box here, dx bar, I'm going to stop writing the of t's just to make it look a little bit less cluttered, but these are all still functions of t. dx bar dt squared plus 2 times dx bar dt times d eta dt plus d eta dt squared. Right, so all I've done is I've foiled out this binomial, or multiplied it out. Now let's look at this term right here. The derivative with respect to t of eta, and we take that and we square it. So if you remember from before, I'll go back to our, our original example that we already understand and say that this delta t has to be small, right? If we, if we move a large distance, right, this, this will still change because the second derivative will take over, change the first derivative, and, and we won't have this nice property that changing it doesn't doesn't affect the value of y, right? This needs to be small. And so the same thing is true over here, right? Eta, this eta is our difference function. It's like our delta t before. So this has to be small for, for this, for all of this math we're doing to make sense, to say that we just want this shift to be a little bit so that when we shift it, the total action we calculate doesn't change at all. So that means that since this is so small, when we square it, it becomes super small so that we actually don't have to care about it anymore. It's so small that we can count it to be zero. This is a lot bigger because we're not requiring x to be small and, and n, or not n, eta, and eta, I should make this look more like an eta, and eta is small, so this is just small.
but this with eta squared is super small. So we can actually forget all about this, just like we forgot about the second derivative, right? That was, that was second order, this is second order. We can forget about the second order things because they're super small in this case. So let's remember this. I'll use blue and circle this to say, we'll come back to this later. We've, we've done something with this kinetic energy term. And this is all going somewhere much more simple. So even though right now it might seem like, why are we doing all this? In a moment, it will, it will simplify a bit. But now let's take care of our potential energy function. So we have u, u of x of t, right? And that, that's equal to, if we make our substitution, u of x bar plus eta. And again, these are both functions of t. Now we might not be quite sure how to deal with this, but if we're counting eta as small, we can actually write this as a Taylor series. So we can say that this equals u, u of x bar, right? The, the minimum path that we're talking about, plus eta times the first derivative of u. So maybe I'll use orange again. The first derivative of u, u prime evaluated at x bar. And then there are more terms, right? There are, let's see, there's eta squared, not an n, an eta, eta squared times the second derivative the second derivative of u evaluated at x bar. And then there are more terms which we won't write down right now. And even this term that we wrote down, right? Just like we set up here, that this has to do with the second derivative and, and the, the square of eta. So since eta is so small, this eta squared is super small. So we can cross this out as well. So just like we could cross this out, cross out this second order, just like before we didn't care about the second derivative, we can actually cross out these second order terms and completely forget about them. Now at this point, let's combine our t and our u. So we'll say that s equals the integral from t1 to t2. And then I'll write all of these terms out and I'll write them out in a certain order that will suggest something. The integral of m over two times dx bar dt squared plus this potential energy function, right? We don't know the situation necessarily, but for any situation, the potential energy function of x bar right, x bar. So I've, I've done this term here with the m, m over two, this term here, and I'm gonna route the other terms. So plus m times dx bar dt, right, I'm doing this term here, and this divided by two and times two cancel out, so my, my twos go away, times the derivative of eta with respect to t. So now I've finished with the kinetic energy terms and I have one last potential energy term. So plus eta times the derivative of the potential energy function evaluated at x bar. All of this stuff integrated over time. So I'll put a box around here just to specify that this is all integrated over time. Now if we look at how all of this is written, we can notice that this part right here, I'm going to use pink, this part right here is just the exact thing we would get if we had no eta, right? If we just had this real path. We would have m one half mv squared 
right, of the real path. That's what this is. And the potential energy of, of the real path is just, just this. This is the potential energy of the real path. So this, if we integrate over this, this is the action of the real path, right? Action of the real path right here. So this stuff over here is the stuff responsible for the change in action when we go from the ideal path to a slightly different path. So since this is the change, we can rewrite it as, we can call this ds, or the delta s, or this little, little change in action is the integral from t1 to t2. And this is also from t1 to t2. t1 to t2 of all this stuff. So I'll rewrite it. m dx dt times d eta dt d eta dt plus eta times the derivative with respect to x u prime of the potential energy function evaluated at the true path. All of this integrated over time. Since we said that we can integrate them separately, we can write that S equals S of this path that's near the truth path is equal to the ideal path's action, this action, plus this this small difference in action, ds. I'm using this curly d, this delta. I don't know why. I could have called it ds. But regardless of the d I use, I'm just, I just mean a small change, a small change in X, s, a small change in the action. We don't know what the action is for the ideal path. We don't know what the ideal path is. But if we can find this ds, or this delta s, this change in action, is zero, we'll know that this thing we have here, whatever path we're looking at, is the correct path. So ds, I'll rewrite it, this small change in action is equal to the integral between t1 and t2, t2, and I'll keep my color coding, I guess, mass times the derivative of the true path with respect to time times the derivative with respect to t again of the change in the paths or the differences the difference between the paths plus the path difference times the derivative of the potential energy function evaluated at the true path, all of this integrated over time equals zero. All of this equals zero. So if we find out how to make this equal zero, we'll know that we found the true path. Now it may not seem like we've actually gotten all that far, but, but we're actually pretty close to being able to find the true path. And in the next video, we'll cross the finish line and end up with something fairly simple that you might recognize.